more entrainiacs. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! <sighs> it's new bike day, but not the new bike day that I think you're expecting. You might be saying, hey, Taryn, what new Ventum did you get? Well, I did not. Can it? So, I think I know what I've got in here, but let's open it up and take a look. Over the course of this year, 2020, there being no races, I've talked about going on endurance adventures, things different than just swim, bike, run, triathlon, over and over and over, getting into the time trial position. I wanna go and explore, and yep, this is exactly what I thought it was. What has been taking the world by storm over the last few years? Well, something that is very exciting for me, and hopefully, gets you into it. See those big knobby tires? This is the Canyon Grail gravel bike. So a gravel bike in the simplest terms is a road bike with mountain bike tires. And the idea behind it is that instead of going only on the same roads over and over and over, I can go on gravel roads. I can do a little bit of off-road. I can go from roads to off-road to get to another road and essentially just opens up the world to sort of really good road style training where I can start putting out really good power, but being able to explore at the same time. It's not all one or the other. Like when I go on a fat bike ride, it's really hard to go and do high power because the geometry is so different. Whereas with this, I can go and still do really good workouts. Tyler Mislachuk, who is our local Olympic hopeful for triathlon. I think he's ranked like fifth or seventh in the world in Olympic distance ITU racing. When he goes and sets up shop in Phoenix area for three months every single winter, he says that they bring gravel bikes because they can do all their training, but they can go and also explore and have some fun during the off season. So first things first, Let's put this baby together, we'll get the bike stand out. It is currently 4.41 in the p.m. I know I said morning trainiacs, but it's really just a thing I say at this point. And we're gonna see what the over under is. Do you think I can put this together? It's looking pretty good. In 20 minutes or less, I will feel very handy if I can do it in less than that. 4.42, let's go! with tools, assembly paste, an Allen key, and the different hex heads that you need in here. Ooh, a little pouch, pedals. Let's get it together. are at 536 so 54 minutes but I'm also moving the camera around a lot and I was starting with not having anything prepared I had to go and find all of my lubes and things for putting on the pedals I had to decide which pedals I wanted decide which uh, bottle cage I wanted everything is really smooth it all like essentially all you're putting on is handlebars wheel taking off all of the uh, warning things, lubing the chain, pedals, you're good to go. Really, really quick. Biggest complaint that I've got is that all these warning stickers everywhere, they are on there. Holy smokes, German engineering. I got some work to do. 
So I'm gonna take this for a rip around, give you the lay down of how it rides, because this is gonna be my first ride on a gravel bike. And um, I'll answer the question about why this isn't a Ventum. For anyone that's been around for a long time, you know that I've been a, uh, a Ventum fanboy, whatever you wanna call it, and here I am. About to take a canyon for a ride. This is fun. This is super fun. See a road, you go down it. All endurance rides that have no intervals, just be on a bike for an extended period of time in the non-winter months are now gravel rides. This is like, man. Second point, the bike is phenomenal. I am not a tremendously good bike mechanic, but we're basically just putting a bunch of bolts together that are all supplied to you and all the tools are supplied to you. It's pretty easy to put this thing together and have it running smooth. Disc brakes historically are a little intimidating to me, but uh, it's rolling. It's rolling really nice. Whoa, holy smokes is that fun. Gravel. You had me at hello. So, this here is the Canyon Grail CFSL. I want to say 8.0. It's like it's like their top of the line gravel bike. It is double handlebars here so that when you're on the gravel it ends up taking up some of the chatter. The seat post here also takes up some of the chatter because it's split. It is a one by at the front and like mountain bike gearing, well, kind of in between road and mountain bike gearing at the back. I ended up getting this with SRAM Force ETAP. And the reason for that is what I've found is as I travel a lot now, getting a bike together and apart and together and apart as you travel, it ends up like with mechanical or with cables, with say Shimano DI2, it gets really cumbersome because all these little cables and connections get loose, they get frayed, they get bent, they get unclipped. So I was really spending a lot of time while I was traveling going to a bike shop while I was traveling to get that fixed. SRAM ETAP, it's wireless and really good. So. I wanted to go with that and uh, frankly the whole thing about this is this 2020 has made me think about how monotonous triathlon training can be and we end up going out on the same bike on the same roads often doing the same intervals and in a lot of cases we are like we're in the prime of our lives we're healthy we're fit why not use that health and fitness to go on some endurance adventures and go exploring? And with a road bike, you're pretty limited to which roads are safe, which roads are suitable for road biking, ones that have shoulders. And here in Winnipeg, that's like three roads. But with gravel, I didn't even plan a route out there. I just went. And if I saw a road, I went down it. It's like so much like bike riding when you're a kid, I always say that there are very few things that are as fun when you're 40 as when you're four, and riding a bike is one of them. And gravel riding is a lot more like that. And that whole thing is a little bit part of why I'm riding Canyon now, not Ventum. Let me explain. So over this past year, I've been doing all that thinking about endurance adventures and trying some new things while I'm young and I'm healthy and able to go exploring. And two things that, like first, Canyon for the last two years has always liked what we do and kept in touch. And for the last two years, I've always 
said the same thing about Canyon. Now the final two bikes I think are tremendous values. When I actually found these, I'm like, wow, this is really cornering the market for entry level triathlon bikes. And the first one is the Canyon Speedmax CF 7.0. So I've never not liked their bikes. This is not a new thing. I've really liked them. And the thing is that this year with thinking about wanting to do more endurance adventures and Canyon having a full lineup of bikes. Meanwhile, Ventum is still building that. I still really like the Ventum road bike. I love the Ventum tri bike, but it's just time to broaden out and be able to ride a whole bunch of different bikes. So I am going to be swapping out all my bikes, my tri bike for the Speedmax, the road bike for the Canyon Air Road. And I've got a deal where any bike that I want to try, I can swap it in and out and like review it. So I'll be able to try the mountain bike, the enduro bike. I'll start to be able to try some cycle cross, which I've always wanted to do. This is exciting. And for anyone who's up in Canada and wondering how I got this, well, they shipped it up to me as part of the sponsorship, but they've committed to having the logistics and the infrastructure in place to service Canada by spring of 2021 and they're actively saying if you're in Canada right now like don't do that thing where you ship something to the border and then get it over because they just don't have parts they don't have stock they don't have the serviceability up here in Canada and they want to make sure that some of the things that they found when they first came into North America before they were 100% ready, where people were having trouble getting parts, that doesn't happen up in Canada. So by spring, should happen. And they've also told me that all of those kind of issues that you heard about in North America right at the start in the United States are solved. And they learned from that before coming up to Canada. So that's what's up, Trainiacs. Go on some endurance adventures of your own. And if you have to buy some new bikes to do that and convince your spouse that it's a good idea, Tell them that I said it was okay. Blame it on me. That's cool. And if you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. Later, Trainiacs.